This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. Thanks for being here with us at 5 o'clock. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. New tonight, a growing concern for people living in a near east side neighborhood. Now that construction crews have cleared out, homeless camps have popped up. RTV6's Stephanie Wade shows us the issue and explains where people experiencing homelessness are and are not allowed to be. Some neighbors are concerned about people staying on the sidewalks here on East Market Street downtown. This road was partially closed this summer for construction, but once it opened back up, people experiencing homelessness moved in. The issue isn't about homeless. We, we have homeless here. We accommodate them, the Lighthouse, uh, Progress House, Salvation Army. That's not the issue. We just want a safe walk downtown. Some people in the Holy Cross neighborhood say they're worried about safety. Whether recent crime can be attributed to people necessarily staying below the underpass or not, they say they've been seeing more break-ins lately. A neighbor even sent us this picture of people sleeping on her porch. What we found out speaking with the IMPD homeless flex team is that people are allowed to stay on the sidewalks so long as they don't block them entirely. Right now there is a housing crisis for homeless because there's just not enough. There's the waiting list is outrageous. Um, if, if I can't house them right away, then they're they're within their rights to stay where they're at. And I can't make them. I can't make that camp go away. Coming up at six, we dive deeper into this issue and see what people experiencing homelessness have to say. Working for you, Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Stephanie, thank you. And the Flex team visits each homeless camp in the city at least twice a week. Mayor Hogsett's proposed 2020 budget also includes money to expand the pathway to employment program. It's the city's pilot workforce program that pays people who panhandle up to 40 hours a week to clean the city's streets. So far, 11 people in the program have been placed in permanent part-time and full-time positions. New developments, Metro Police say they have found the vehicle and a suspect in a hit and run that seriously injured two people. Early this afternoon, officers impounded a maroon minivan from a home on Taft Street near McCarty Street. They believe the van struck two people Tuesday night near West Washington and Denison. The victims were on a motorcycle. They were taken to the hospital in serious and critical condition. Although police have identified a suspect, they have not made an arrest in this case. Also take a close look at this vehicle. Metro police say it was involved in a hit and run last month, July 29th, around 9.30 p.m. to be exact. A mother and her 12-year-old daughter were crossing the street on the 14th block of Arlington Avenue when they were struck by a white Chrysler 304D. They suffered numerous broken bones. As for the vehicle, the driver's side headlight was damaged and was not working after the collision. The windows are tinted also. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. Everyone is okay after a man allegedly threatened to shoot people at the headquarters of the Indianapolis Housing Agency on Meridian Street. Employees were forced to shelter in place. However, police found and detained the suspect. The IHA building will be closed to the public until tomorrow. Extra police presence is expected when it reopens. And with just 10 days until the red line opens, Indigo is making its final preps and getting everything ready for you to ride on September 1st. Indigo gave us a special early ride on the red line today. The red line buses are battery electric, meaning they're quieter and cleaner than usual buses you'll see on the roads. If you're driving in the area, some lanes are for buses only and others are for both buses and cars. As Indigo spokesperson Lauren Day says, it's an adjustment for everybody. This is a learning experience for everybody. New riders, our operators, uh, drivers as well. So we've uh, had the pavement markings ready um, really finally since the end of July. So we've used that as an education period. And if you're curious to try it out, all rides on the Red Line are free throughout all of September. Uh, from the Red Line to at least sun blue sky, you see a couple breaks in there. We're not done with the shower threat quite yet. A cold front is moving its way through central Indiana. That will put our temperatures uh, back in the 70s for several days. We're there right now. See this little area of rain just to the west of Crawfordsville. It's one of a few areas and a little lightning with this too. Quick downpours, they're slow moving. They're generated by the transition to the cooler temperatures. Other showers from Sullivan to Bloomfield to just south of Bloomington and Nashville. Temperatures this evening will continue to fall. Once the cold front makes its way to the south, the humidity level will drop as well. Scattered showers this evening. Isolated thunderstorm will be at 72 at 11 o'clock tonight.
We really work as a team to support the students. And so to have somebody who's just as vested in that child's success at the table, it's really invaluable. Coming together to help children that need it the most. Tonight, we are taking a closer look at the effort to help kids in the child welfare system in Marion County. It comes as graduation rates for foster youth are more than 20% lower than other students in the state. RTV6's Nicole Griffin is showing us how child advocates are working along, alongside a team of others to help these kids become successful. For the last 20 years, Polly Cunningham and her fiance, Robert Davis, have been helping some of the most vulnerable kids in our community. They have fostered more than 100 children, adopting five of them. Polly says it's a calling, one she got from her own mother. After my mama passed, it was like her passion, and I love kids too, so that's why I took it on too. Oftentimes, she says the kids have behavioral issues they deal with based on experiences that they've been through. It makes enrolling them into school and seeing success in the classroom difficult. They feel they need attention, okay, so, you know, to come from background where they didn't get, get, get attention, so they get disrupted in the class, you know, and uh, cause the other students not to get what they want, so consequently, a lot of times they get put out. According to recent data, only 64% of foster kids graduate. That's compared to 88% of other students in the state. That is where child advocates, educational liaisons step in to help. They work alongside the caregivers and the school to create an educational plan for the students. So when we came in, we had a team, we had the teacher, we had the case manager, we had myself and whoever else was on that team. Life challenges actually impact their educational performance. So we want to make sure that everyone working with that child understands the child um, holistically from emotional, social, and academic. Coming up tonight at six o'clock, I'll take a closer look at how child advocates partner with schools across our state to ultimately improve graduation rates. Working for you tonight on the Northwest Side, Nicole Griffin, RTV6. Nicole, thank you. And the Child Advocate Educational Liaisons are referred to help kids that are involved in Marion County court cases and need that support. At 6, we will also tell you about a new project underway involving the liaisons in IU School of Education that is looking to continue improving graduation rates for foster children. This month, Hiring Hoosiers is focusing on skills that take you from classroom to career. Let's take a look at how high school students in Greenwood are training to become first responders. Central 9 allows students to use firefighting gear, work on real fire engines, and perform rescue tasks you'll see at the scene of a fire. They get dual credit over the two-year program, and if they pass the tests, they'll receive fire and hazmat certifications. In their senior year, they can also take the EMT course to learn basic life support. Students say this prepares them for a career while working toward their diploma. Yeah, when I graduate, I'll have all my certifications to be a firefighter. I'll have, uh, if I pass the tests, I'll have my EMT. And then I can get hired on on hospitals to be an EMT. And then right when I'm 21, I can apply to be on fire departments. Their instructors are real firefighters from multiple departments, giving students a broader knowledge of how different fire stations operate. Coming up on the news at 5, massive online fraud and money laundering. We have details on a major federal bus that has impacted millions. A drug dealer somewhere out there is likely going to go bananas when they hear about this. Why their million dollar stash will be anything but fruitful for them. See your central Indiana Buick dealer. Today, the FBI announcing they have busted a major online fraud and money laundering ring. 80 people are now charged, accused of stealing millions of dollars from businesses and unsuspecting individuals. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports from Los Angeles. These are just some of the suspects charged in what the FBI calls one of the largest fraud and money laundering cases in U.S. history. Law enforcement agencies have received complaints from victims in every one of the 50 states and scores of foreign countries. Today, investigators unsealing the indictment after a nearly three-year-long investigation into thefts totaling $10 million. In some cases, the suspects are accused of orchestrating romance schemes, targeting elderly or otherwise vulnerable victims who were looking for friendship or relationships online and convincing them to send money. In some cases, the victims in this case thought they were communicating with U.S. servicemen stationed overseas, when in fact, they were emailing with con men. 
Some of the victims in this case lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in this way. Investigators say the scammers also targeted businesses. BEC scammers used hacked email accounts to convince businesses or individuals to make payments that were either completely bogus or that uh, should have been otherwise paid to legitimate companies. The FBI says many of the 80 suspects in this scheme are Nigerian nationals. Some are based abroad and could face extradition, but more than a dozen arrests were here in the U.S. And right now, officials are still trying to track down several other suspects in this country. And the FBI says there were at least 32 victims in the U.S. and other countries. They say it is unlikely they will ever get their money back despite these arrests. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. Well, we know bananas are good sources of potassium and fiber, but cocaine? Washington state authorities found bricks of that drug hiding in a shipment of the fruit. The shipments ended up at three grocery stores Sunday. Investigators value the cocaine at more than a million dollars. Workers at a store were just doing their job stocking the fruit in the produce section. That's when they noticed something off and notified police. The cocaine had been shipped in normal boxes of bananas, although exactly where it came from is still a mystery tonight. Hmm. Well, Sarah Sanders is stepping up to the anchor desk after stepping back from behind behind the podium. The former White House press secretary is beginning a new role as a Fox News contributor. The, the network announced Sanders will make her debut on Fox and Friends on September 6th. She is following the footsteps of several others who left the Trump administration and joined Fox. Hope Hicks and Raj Shah both work for Fox Corporation. Sanders says she is proud to join the team and provide political insight. She resigned as press secretary in June. Renting a car is becoming trickier for some because of a lot of more extra charges these days while well, working for you what you need to know so you don't overspend. Sometimes those extras seem to be offered in a little sneakier way. In the past, the insurance question was, do you want insurance? But now we're asked just the standard coverage today or do you want added insurance? If you think about it, both options mean you're buying additional insurance when you may already be covered with your normal insurance coverage. And it used to be you could prepay and bring back the car on empty or leave with a full tank of gas and bring it back full. But that bring back full option is getting tricky. Some companies now don't fill the car up all the way with gas. They let you leave with just under or just over a half a tank. You're expected to return it at the same amount. So you risk bringing the car back with less gas and facing more significant fees. AAA says you can start to expect lower gas prices with the end of summer nearing. They say prices this fall may drop by as much as 25 cents per gallon. That would make the average about $2.40. That's down 35 cents a gallon from July 4th when gas was 2.75. Factors driving gas prices down include a decrease in demand after Labor Day and the shift to a winter blend gasoline in September that's cheaper to produce. More local artists are adding their talents to a program that promotes reading. Today, the public collection unveiled two new bookshare stations the station at dr martin luther Ju excuse me the station at dr mlk jr park was designed by achu patufa it's called mind sales and it reflects how books can transport readers across the globe or into the depths of their own imagination you may have seen them around town those book sharing stations sponsored by the group called the public collection it's also a reminder of our country's immigrant history and how most americans ancestors came to to this land by boat, whether by choice or not. The other new station is downtown at the Athenaeum. It was designed by the artists Owens and Crawley and is called Fisher. It was inspired by the history of the Athenaeum as a social and community center for German immigrants. Public collection founder Rachel Simon joined the artists at today's unveilings. My goal has always been to create more access to books and art by removing social barriers. Strengthening community and highlighting the most important conversations was always the hope. And I think this hope is being realized with our two newest um, bookshare installations that we're celebrating here today. Both honor the immigrant experience and highlight the value of education and the continued pursuit of social justice. The newest book stations bring the total number of this temporary installations to 12, all designed by Indiana-based artists. The public collection launched in 2014 and invites all people to engage with visual arts and to borrow and return books at their leisure and at no cost. More than 90,000 books have been distributed in the last five years. And they are all around town. You can just catch uh -huh. them around. It's a lot of reading. Yeah. Uh, temperature's cooler today, coolest day of the month so far. You can far. feel it. Yeah, 78. The humidity drops tomorrow. It's still
still a bit on the sticky side, and we're not quite done with the rain yet, but we will be. 78 tomorrow, beautiful day on Saturday, still nice on Sunday, a three-day dry stretch is on the way. And check out these overnight lows. I'm guessing you'll have the windows open at some point, let that fresh air in as the humidity drops. That allows the temperatures to stretch out a little more and cool off at night and then warm up during the afternoon. This is the view looking to the north. There's still a cold front in central Indiana. That's often a spark for some showers, isolated thunderstorms, not expecting any severe weather. We may have a downpour or two. As you look at the radar, not overwhelming. They're just kind of scattered. We'll zoom into Montgomery County. Area of rain was producing a little lightning earlier, but that's weakened. It will cross 231 south of Crawfordsville, Newmarket, Ladoga, Rochdale. You're in the path of that area of rain. And it was just south of Crawfordsville. Another more widespread diffuse area of rain from Sullivan to Bloomfield. Spencer, Bloomington, Nashville in there, as well as Bedford and Seymour still with some showers to come. You've heard of cold air funnels. We've talked about these occasionally. When the upper parts of the atmosphere get very cold, sometimes the circulation below a developing shower or thunderstorm can produce a funnel. These are not associated with severe storms rarely touch the ground, but we've had a few spotted this afternoon. We thank Harmony for sharing that picture uh, from Grant County and uh, near Marion. Temperature 83 sticks out right now in Lafayette as the warmest 80 in Bedford. Everybody else in between. Another day with multiple dogs to walk. How about that? Gene Dunn sends in the picture of Mookie, Darby, Lily, and Bodie. Don't ask me which is which. But you, they all want the same thing. You walked a group yesterday. I know. So that's eight dogs in two days going on a walk. Thanks for sending in your pictures. Showers around next couple of hours. Then they'll fade away, as you can see, and that will set us up for a dry Friday and weekend. Friday night football will go off without a hitch tomorrow night. Temperatures in the 70s for highs tomorrow. Saturday, most of Sunday, we just try to hit 80. That's the goal. And we hold off on additional showers and thunderstorms until Monday. Looking forward to a pleasant weekend. Enjoy. Thanks, Kevin. Well, coming up, software development is a rapidly growing occupation in our state. That means they need workers. Up next, a program that can get you from a classroom to a tech career in as little as nine months. Strive at Honda Fishers. Hello and a very good day to you. I'm Julie Grant with Court TV Live, and we are covering a big case out of Florida, the state versus Michael Draca. This is day number two of the state's case in chief against the 49-year-old defendant. And today, the jury heard from Draca himself, but in the form of a video taped police interview that he did hours after the incident on July 19th, 2018. So the big question is, will this be the only time the jury hears from Michael Draca? Or will he choose to take the stand and testify in his own defense? Dureka has said from the outset that he was acting in self-defense on that date when he shot and killed 28-year-old Marquise McLaughlin. But the entire incident was caught on this surveillance video you see here. And the jury will have to decide whether or not Dureka's version of events lines up with what the video shows. And this video will likely be the most important witness in this very compelling criminal case. The case has already received a lot of national attention and we will be there live for all of it bringing you gavel to gavel coverage right here on court tv i'm julie grant now back to you in the studio and you can stream court tv live 24 hours a day seven days a week at courttv.com hiring hoosiers is connecting you to career opportunities that start with the right training and kenzie academy is a new local program aimed at getting you from the classroom to a career in tech in as little as nine months with little to no cost to you up front they create a pipeline of tech talent with a focus on getting their students immediately employed. There are 20 to 25 students a quarter finishing their academic program in as little as nine months. The program director says the curriculum is developed by industry experts from Zillow, LinkedIn, and Google. Kenzie costs $24,000 for the two-year program, but Kenzie Academy also offers an income share agreement where students pay $100 up front and do not pay any tuition until they land a job. Really working hard to uh, meet the uh, opportunities gap that exists in Indiana with tech jobs. And so we're training our students to produce on a daily basis, not just individual folks, but in groups. So they're working on agile teams where there's like uh, product development, uh, you know, scrum masters and all these different, you know, tech lingos for t uh, team development. And so we're teaching them not only these like tech skills, but we're also teaching them the soft skills of team-based work which is just as equally important. 
Along with Kenzie Academy taking half the time of a traditional programming degree, students can partner with Butler's Executive Education Program for joint certificates. Kenzie is available for recent high school grads as well as professionals wanting to change careers. Learn more about Kenzie Academy and Kenzie Free at HiringHoosiers.com. Coming up all new at 6 o'clock here on RTV6, we've all heard turn around, don't drown when encountering high water on the road. Now there's another reason, a hefty fine, how one local judge will penalize you. But first on the Now Indy, a tricky project in one Indy area has finally come together and residents will enjoy the new access it provides to the Monon Trail. You're watching RTV6.